This is 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast Episode 154, November's Dress Rehearsal for 2022. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui Podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away and usually in about five minutes. Now, let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello, my feng shui friend. We are, gosh, just days away from having the change of time here in America. We will be falling back, as they say, one hour coming this week. Very excited about that. I always love getting an extra hour in the day and just hate it in the spring when that hour evaporates and we spring forward. I'm ready for this time change actually to stop. I wish we wouldn't do it. It's it, it, it it's just, a, you know, a weird thing. It gets you all kind of, you know, discombobulated and you feel kind of out of sorts. I know I do. Uh, but when it comes to the fall, I generally like that falling back feeling. <laughs> and it makes me think of falling back into bed. And that's never a bad thing, right? Extra rest is always good. Hey, I want to say thank you to everybody, well, who's listening. But... Thank you for responding to my my question about what your burning question is for the year 2022. It was very enlightening and very interesting, some of the comments. There's a lot of very specific comments that people want to know what, you know, what is the year going to be like for an earth rat or for a water ox. And lots of tigers ask uh, questions about what the year was going to be like for them. But uh, there were also lots of comments as well. It's just very interesting to see what is on your mind and, and what you're thinking about in terms of 2022. And this brought up the whole idea of talking about November because it is a dress rehearsal for next year. That's right. <laughs> now, if you've been following some of the astrologers, they're saying that November is going to be a wild and bumpy ride, uh, sort of like going up in an airplane and having lots of turbulence, which is just never fun. Even though they say it's absolutely safe, I don't like it. <laughs> it doesn't. I'm not afraid the the plane's going to fall out of the sky. I just, you know, just like it nice and smooth. <laughs> But we've got uh, we got a month ahead of us, don't we? And this month is, uh, we've got, let's see, on November 19th, we have a partial lunar eclipse. That means a chapter is coming to a close. An ending is going to be happening. It's when the door is closed and locked behind us. And it's a way of getting us to move forward. So while the lunar eclipse is is one of an ending and a chapter closing, it's it's essential, right? We have to move on and we have to move past certain things. And sometimes the universe knows better. <laughs> and it just shuts the door behind us and locks it tight so that we can't go back and we have to move forward. And that's always, moving forward is always a good thing. You know, there's a, um, there's a Chinese uh, proverb, the hell is not a place. It's a state of being stuck. And this is what's great about a, a, an eclipse, whether it's lunar or solar, but especially, well, actually both, both of them, I was going to say, especially solar, because solar is usually a new beginning, a, a fresh start. We've got that in December coming up. This is a very active time right now. We've got lots of energy uh, moving uh, in both the cosmos. We, we have another geomagnetic storm uh, that's coming. So if you are listening to your favorite radio station and all of a sudden it's playing classical or something that's, or country or something just completely out of left field, that's why. Uh, in fact, that's what happened. We had a big geomagnetic storm last month 
in October, and the same thing happened. I was listening to my um, NPR station, and darn if it didn't turn into uh, uh, Tejano music, <laughs> which I love, but uh, it wasn't the news I was expecting to hear anyhow. But it was, you know, it was still, uh, but that's one of the weird things, and I wasn't able to tune the channel. And when I the little digging, I found out, oh, there is a geomagnetic storm and it causes all kinds of wacky things. So if you see electricity fluctuating, your phone is acting goofy. Uh, maybe your the Wi-Fi in your house is, is messing up. Uh, you can't get your favorite radio station. Maybe you can't listen to NPR like I did, uh, or maybe you'll learn some new, uh, new styles of music. That's why. And the, the geomagnetic storm happens when solar flares come off. It's like a big expulsion of hot air and gas uh, and, and, and particles, uh, cosmic particles, I guess, uh, that get, are expelled from the surface of the sun. And it is, it's directed at Earth, and it creates this upper atmosphere disturbance in the Earth. On the plus side, if you are like some of the folks who are, are listening to this are from uh, up north like Gaylene and from uh, the down south in uh, down under, uh, I, I, can't, I can't think of a name right off the, uh, off the bat, but um, you may see the Aurora Borealis. Even, even folks that are uh, far north in the U.S. like uh, Maine, um, maybe, even, maybe even Washington State. Uh, may see the aurora borealis, but that's that's all coming up this month. So first of all, we got a new moon on Thursday, and it's supposed to be a little bit of a wild ride. Then we've got the lunar eclipse on Friday. Uh, the Friday and that, that new moon is is on Thursday. The, so it's going to be tomorrow when you're listening to this. If you're listening on Wednesday when this comes out, it's the fourth of November, and then on the nineteenth of November. We have the lunar eclipse, and it is on the, on a Friday, so uh, that's kind of good. Maybe if you can work from home that day, <laughs> I think I would just try to keep a really low profile uh, on on that day. Then we have a solar eclipse on the fourth of December. That's on a Saturday, so also big big events, uh, a new beginning, a new fresh start. So this is uh, a, a month that's packed full of energy. And one of the things that's packed full of is energy that is going to be very similar to the year's energy in 2022, the year of the tiger. That's right. It's um, pretty exciting because you get to see a little bit of a dress rehearsal of, of next year, but in a really small condensed form. So it's sort of like, here, you know, next year is a big tiger or a big, you know, big ox. Well, it's tiger year, but, uh, and then this month is going to be like a little bullion cube. <laughs> anyway, hate to reduce a beautiful ox to, to that, but it's giving you a taste of what's to come. And this is uh, a, a time when, you know, like I said, we've got uh, some energies that are going on geomagnetically. There's also astrologically, it's supposed to be a little bit of a turbulent ride, lots of, uh, lots of excitement, ups and downs. I'm expecting the stock market maybe to do a little, little um, bump and blip, but you know, I, I feel good about it actually on, on the whole. Um, now that I've said that, <laughs> you know, who knows next week it all it takes a giant dive. I don't think it will. Uh, that's because so many people are invested in the stock market. It used to be one of those things that I think could go, you know, way up and then way down. Now, obviously, it went way down in the spring of 2020, and that was because of, well, the pandemic. What was going to happen? What what are we going to do? And uh, we, you know, everybody got. Uh, settled in with the idea that we're going to, we're going to manage, right? We're just going to manage. Well, let's, let's talk about how we're going to manage this month and what we're expecting this month, because I wanted to share with you uh, what's going on in November. So you can use it as sort of, like I said, a little peek into the future of what's happening as of February next year in 2022. So let's talk about the, the energies. There really are uh, some uh, a mixed bag, but there's a few bright spots 
on the horizon. So I, I like that. And there's a few sparkling gems uh, that we can talk about. Now, one of the confusions that some folks had, I, I write, uh, uh, you know, my, my forecast for each year. And when you purchase that, you get monthly updates. You get three monthly updates uh, every, each month, in addition to my weekly newsletter. But you get a flying star update. That's what are the energies going to be like in your home? How do they affect you? And the other is you get a, a new moon notice, which tells you about what the new moon is, what to wish for, how to use the energy cosmically for the month, you know, as above, so below, right? And we have energies that are called stars uh, that move around in our house each year, but you'll get the flying star update for the month. So all 12 months of the year, you also get the new moon again, 12 months of, of new moon notices. And I also do a, a horoscope for each zodiac sign for each month. Now, some folks said, why is your zodiac outlook so much more positive this, this month than the flying star? Well, first of all, flying star has nothing, is, is, not has nothing, but has, it's different than the, the zodiac. First of all, we've got a five star, uh, the five yellow that's in the center sector this month. And that means that's it, you know, it's just a difficult, a difficult energy. Now the five star is at home in the center sector. There's not a zodiac sign that's under its influence. Uh, you know, well, actually they all are if you want to be technical about it, but it there's not a zodiac sign that is in, uh, in, in that sector where the five star is. So they're not affected the same way your house is, which every house has a center. We all do. The other thing is the east to west axis houses are really going to be struggling. And this is families and children, and it runs all the way across the center. And my concern is that um, children and families, we're, we're going to see a lot of division. Um, we're, we're already seeing it about the vaccinations for children. Uh, should they be vaccinated? What's the right age? What should I do as a parent? All those questions are coming up. Plus, we've got the holidays that are coming up. And what do we think about families at the holidays? And we think about that. And so that so even though the rest of the zodiac star signs are are uh, in a pretty decent position, the rooster and the rabbit are the two zodiac signs that are probably going to be uh, mostly most challenged. But also the monkey and the sheep will as well. And these are the signs uh, that. It's, it's not as difficult as it is in your house because we have all of those energies in our house, whereas if we're just one zodiac sign, and we're, just, uh, we're uh, under that sign's influence. Anyway, so that's the difference. Is Mostly it's that five star that moves into the center is going to cast a bit of a pall <laughs> on the month, but we're going to talk about how to handle it. But here's the important news to use is all, all the zodiacs, I want you to be thinking about making the most uh, of your of your sign this month because this you're getting a taste of what to expect next year, and so I hope you have some great energy uh, coming to you. Uh, I know that uh, if you are a rat, there's some opportunity for movement. If you felt stuck and like nothing's moving in your life, it, you're going to get unstuck this month, and that's true of 2022. So there's some good things for the zodiac signs. But there's difficulties in your home because of this east-west axis and because of this center having the five stars. So let's let's move on and talk about this. So let's talk about the north sector. Now this will be have just glittering starlight from a run of beautiful energies that are going to be bringing opportunity, favor, and money. So if you have a house in, in any of the north directions, like north or northeast or northwest, fortune will smile on you. This whole string of North houses really have got some great energy coming. Energy for opportunity, energy for promotion, energy for favor, uh, like people who come to your aid, people at a distance, people uh, in foreign locations. So I, I want you to be thinking about that. So if you've got that that North, Northwest or Northeast house, uh, this is a really nice month for opportunity. Seize it when you can. Uh, next is uh, the South and Southeast houses. There's also good fortune coming to, to those houses. And that's because there are some 
positive stars that are coming in. Now, one uh, in the southeast is the four star, and this is an opportunity for romance, for travel, for educational advancement, for creativity. If you are a snake or you are a dragon, you will find that there's plenty of, of opportunity to get out and circulate, and if you can, and obviously do it safely, and circulate with people you know, and be creative, and put your best fo foot forward on publishing that blog getting out your videos, uh, your, your, uh, get out your, uh, your put, publish those manuscripts, send it in. If you've been working on a, on a book, for instance, or a script, whatever the case may be, uh, get, get out there and circulate as much as you can and put your best creative foot forward. And it's also good for romance. So Southeast houses have this opportunity. Educational luck is coming as well. So all good things coming to the Southeast. Now let's talk about the South. Now the South has had sort of like friends. <clears throat> let's see, how shall I say this? Friends this year have had like a, you know, if, if, if you had a, a candle and you put it on the porch and it started to rain, well, that candle might stay lit, but if there's blowing wind with some rain, then the candle might go out. It's sort of like a damp towel kind of feeling with friends this year. And even though there's opportunity that's come to South Houses and opportunity for growth, opportunity to overcome the competition and grow and transform, uh, this month, the Nine Star is coming to visit. And there's a little bit of a clash of energies. There's going to be a push me and pull me kind of effect that's going on. So this is the kind of energy, but it's also recognition energy. This is where people notice you. So if you've got anything to put out into the world, make a presentation, do a video, start a YouTube channel, get your blog published and get it out there and start making posts. This is a great way to get it or to, you know, get the attention of, of superiors to, you know, that is always a good way of, of rising in your career. So those two houses and those two bedrooms, if you're in the Southeast corner of your bedroom or the South corner of your house, um, there's some good stuff that's coming to you uh, this month. So that's nice. And that's going to be true in 2022. There is opportunity for recognition friendships will start up. I think that one of the reasons why is because I think we're going to see more travel again. We're going to see an opening up of the pandemic. There's going to be enough people vaccinated, enough of the pandemic starting to die down. I know that there are some, some states that are, they're having record levels like Wyoming. There's still surges going on in different parts of the country and the world right now. So, you know, that's always there. So we have to just kind of keep that in mind. But the South houses, uh, you've got uh, some good stuff. The Southwest house, not as, not as nice. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Let's talk about the number one difficult energy that we have to deal with this month and next year. And we all are sharing in this energy. Everybody has a center of their house. So everyone is going to deal with this energy the, this month and, and next year. This is our shared misery. Now, in 2021, you're the ox, the sixth annual star has been here. And this is a lot of institutions, a lot of governmental kind of control, a lot of maneuvering, a lot of pol politicking. We certainly have seen that, wh whether it's about elections or the the COVID vaccine, uh, we, we're seeing a lot of a lot of that, and and continuing on with restrictions because the six star also rules like police and mandates, <laughs> like we've been having that kind of thing. Now, once uh, and and fortunately, fortunately, this month with the five star moving in for the for the month, uh, and it's going to be joining up with the six star. That means that we're looking at uh, an opportunity to take some of the sting out of the five yellow. Next year, it's going to be stronger because it's in its home location. In fact, all the energies go back to their home locations. That means we have a doubling effect that's coming to us in 2022. So what's good is really good and what's difficult could be really difficult. So let's talk about that a little bit more. We've got the five star coming in this month. It's joining up with the six annual star. Now the five star uh, could create some some difficulties, but I think that what we want to be really cautious about is that we don't 
aggravate it. And what does that mean? That means in the middle of your house, avoid candles, avoid red colors, avoid noise. Don't go digging around there, or, you know, tearing up the, <laughs> the foundation or, you know, knocking down walls, that kind of thing. We really want to keep it kind of quiet and super low key. And this is probably a good idea because what are we talking about? Well, here in America, what we're looking at uh, the Thanksgiving uh, holidays, uh, holiday is coming up and, um, the holiday season is coming up. Well, in Diwali, uh, in India, uh, is coming up big festival of light. And so families are getting together, uh, from here all over the world. And in, in, in this month, as the holidays start to kick off, um, and th- what that means is if we start stirring up the center sector, you know, with loud parties or, you know, boisterous families, that kind of thing. Uh, I I would say we have an opportunity to, to poke the hornet's nest, shall we say. (laughs) And when, when we get that five star going, uh, because we've got candles and people and talking and activity, uh, it can create uh, problems, problems that, that range from serious illness. It could be anything from a broken bone to cancer. Uh, also, you know, families having falling outs, I, I, couples having falling outs, families with their kids, all kinds of difficulties can come uh, from this, this combination. Uh, one of the concerns I have is even cancer of the head, the head and the mouth, that kind of thing. So you just want to be, if you have any health things that come up this month, pay close attention to them. And the same is true next year. Pay close attention to them because, uh, you know, the like weird mole that, that's kind of changing and do, doing some weird stuff. Maybe it's nothing. Go get it checked out. Just don't th- put everything on the back burner. I'll wait on that. Don't wait, especially if it's something with your health. Get it checked out quickly. Uh, So this month, uh, this is what we've got is that five and six star. So we're going to really want to make uh, a really uh, quiet center sector, especially if you've got a fireplace or a kitchen here, if you could avoid having any kind of flames, that means no candles, no fireplace, uh, don't run your fireplace, especially if it's in the center of your home. How do you know where the center of your home is? If you can draw a a tic-tac-toe grid over your floor plan, now if you've got like an L-shaped house, um, you'll have missing corners. But you draw an evenly distributed nine-square tic-tac-toe diagram over your house. If you draw a line from one corner to the other on, on both corners, on two corners, Wherever they meet in the middle, that is your exact center. We want to, so you want to tiptoe around that and keep it dim, quiet, and put in some remedies like a five element pagoda. You could put in a wind chime. If you've got a ceiling fan, just turn it on super low. If you've got a pendulum clock, get it out there, get it ticking. That will help everybody. All right, now let's talk about the number two difficulty, and that's this east-west axis. Now, we're going to have this next year. Uh, in, in the year of the ox, the east-west axis was a really nice thing. Uh, there were some, some benefits to having an east west, or west house, whether that's your, uh, the front doors facing the east or facing the west. All the way across was a really nice energy. Next year, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, and this is where we've got a problem with, uh, we're talking about east and west sectors. East is family, and the oldest son, west is children. So there could be tension that rises up from the oldest son, from your family, and from your children. So uh, with this, we have to be thinking about that. When I see that three argument star uh, that's coming into the east, and and with the seven mouthy star... (laughs) (laughs) coming to the, to the West, it's, I, it makes me think of families arguing. So that worries me for the month ahead. And uh, we just don't want to go in the holiday season and do what you can to head off problems wherever you can keep your cool, keep your calm and, and try to, uh, try to manage uh, those energies as best you can. If that means just removing yourself from the situation, or maybe you don't see certain family members, 
that's what it means. You know, I hate that we have to deal with this energy because, you know, we're always talking about the holiday season here in November. And, and also we're looking at next year's energies. We're looking at families having difficulties next year. And this is, um, these, these energies of, of the family and of the children can, um, really get things going in a hurry. So again, if you, you're afraid of a family meltdown, uh, over who gets a vaccination or who doesn't, or some other squabble or test of wills or politics or personalities, just, uh, cue up some Netflix and order a pizza <laughs> instead of putting on a big meal where you're exhausted and you're, and everyone at the table is, is tense and ready to pop. Nobody needs that kind of anxiety. Now, make sure that you take extra precautions, too, if you have a west door or bedroom, because I worry about the seven star that's going to be coming to the west. I call this the COVID star. The seven is where was in the center two years ago when the pandemic erupted. It erupted right at the start of the Lunar New Year in February 2020, and the seven star was in the middle. This year, it's gone to the northwest, and next year, it's going to the west, and that's the of children. So I'm thinking that's actually, to, when I see that, I think that, you know, uh, the vaccination is, is, a, is one of the positive signs of the seven star. The other is that there could be more infection from children and of children. So I'm very concerned about that, parents. I, I, you're just... I, I've, my heart goes out to you because this, this year is going to be a really difficult year coming up with, do I give my child the vaccine? Do I not? What do I do? What if your kid gets sick with COVID? There are more and more children getting sick with it. So that's obviously a real concern of mine. I, I worry about that very much because, you know, I just love children. We just had Halloween and I, I made a special point to comment on everybody's costume and tell them how pretty or scary they looked or whatever it was. Cause gosh, kids really need a boost. That's what I think it's been hard for all of us dealing with COVID, but I think for the littlest of us, that's really got to be so stressful for them. So, uh, whatever you can do for your kids next year, please do for their health, for their well being. Um, frequent trips out, whether it's flying a kite, going to the park, anything you can do, I think will be uh, helpful, especially anything you can do uh, near water. Uh, would be would be especially helpful because the water takes a sting out of that seven star. Now let's talk about the Southwest. This is the the sector of love and marriage and the woman of the house. And we've got it's called the bullfighting star, and it's where or bullfighting combination. And it's and what we have next year is a um, we've got gosh women have been dealing with stress this year. Just, uh, you know, incredible stress, maybe some depression and just low energy. I know I just about collapsed in September or was it late August? I can't remember. Just about collapsed after um, something uh, f fell through with an employee and um, it just took all my, it took all my energy out. I will tell you it's, this has been a tough year and I'm, I'm, I usually run, you know, I'm in the red line. I'm always, you know, high energy. But women have been dealing with a lot of heaviness, and this month it could come to a head. All I can say is do what you can do, get done what you can get done, but don't pressure yourself. And this is true for next year. I want you to plan for plenty of joy and happiness, whatever that is. Find the things that make you just delighted. And I, that will, it does a lot for your mental outlook, your, your emotional outlook, get yourself outside exercise. It makes a big diff, big difference this month. So we have this three star that's been draining women. And then the two monthly is coming in. That's the energy that's coming in, in 2022. So we have this three annual star with the two monthly star coming in this month. So it's like a big giant, loaded dirt falls on you. <laughs> and, uh, I worry that, uh, this particular combination is like, you know, two bulls in a pasture. 
And uh, it is one of those things. It's like, there's only going to be one of us and, <laughs> anyway. And it can make everything kind of come to a head in relationships. It can make things come to a head for women about, I, I can't do, uh, I can't do everything. I can't manage it all. It's, I, I'm, I, you know, throw my hands up. And, you know, after a long year in the holiday season that's staring at us down both barrels, the whole wrapping, baking, shopping, and trying not to get infected thing is really tiring. <laughs> so if you're the mom, all I want to tell you is give yourself as many breaks as you can. If you are a woman, give yourself as many breaks as you can. Pare down those menus, the baking, the shopping list. Make it as easy as you can on moms or yourself this month and, and women at work uh, or anyone who is supporting baking, shopping, and taking care of you and others. It's, it, I'm, I'm just concerned that that, that energy is uh, one that is, it's just going to just push you to, to your limits. Make sure self-care, self-care, self-care. Get pedicures. Go shopping if you feel like doing piddle around in stores, uh, go see movies, do whatever makes you happy and take care of yourself. And, you know, maybe you buy a smoked turkey this year instead of doing one in the oven. Do whatever you can uh, to make it easy and lighten the load for, your, for yourself because it's going to come out some way and you don't want it to come out at those you love and it or take a toll on your relationships we've got to support because the southwest we've got to support relationships because the southwest is the relationship sector and that means all relationships all the relationships in the house but especially um you know the the woman in the house is this is the hub and everybody else is a spoke off of her and uh, we, we really look to our mothers to, to um, keep everything running, right? Keep it all going. Okay, so um, here we go. So we've got um, the seven star that is in the, in the Northwest. It's actually going to be home with, at home with the six star that's moving there. So men are going to have an energetic break. They're going to have influencers and people helping them and guiding them. So look for people at a distance to come and help you. The six star is a beautiful star. It's a fortune star, and it's moving into the Northwest this month. If you have a Northeast house, or excuse me, Northwest house or a Southeast house, uh, you're going to have good energy either at the front or the back. So that's wonderful. That's really terrific. At the front of the house, it comes in through your door. If it's at, uh, if you're, uh, if you have a Southeast house, then the North Northwest is at, at the rear of your house. And the, usually the rear of the house is where all the action goes on with the family. The, you know, the family room is there, the kitchen is there. So all good stuff. Let's, let's move on around, uh, around the, the energies for the month that are coming up. The Northeast. Uh, now the Southwest houses, uh, will have the two star coming to visit this month and next year. But it, but their axis is northeast and south and southwest. So if you have a house that's southwest, you're going to have a northeast rear. So if you've got a northeast that your house faces the northeast, or you're you're sleeping in the northeast, or the rear of your house is in the northeast. Wow, this is some really terrific energy that's coming. And here's what I want to tell you. Don't be afraid of the energies that are coming for next year with this sort of 258 axis that we've got between the southwest and the northeast. This is actually a good thing. When you have a two and five together or um, you, you, maybe you have a, a five and eight together, they're not as good as a two, five, eight combination. So those are the energies that are coming out. Southwest has two, the center has the five and the Northeast has the eight. That's this month and next year. Those, the, that axis actually is a, re, because it's got those three energies, they redeem each other and they become a, a building block. So Northeast and Southwest houses, even though the Southwest has the two star coming to the, to the Southwest, that Northeast sector that's either at the back or the front of your house, it's going to have the eight star of opportunity, social and business advancement this year, this month. There's great opportunity for recognition with others, romance and sociable times, wealth advancement. I really like it. Uh, if you could add a, your wealth bowl there, add an image of a, of a, of a bowl in this, in this, like the, I have, uh, our, 
our um, uh, financial planner gave us a uh, Merrill Lynch bull. And uh, actually, I saw them on their desk. And I said, hey, I want a bull. <laughs> and they gave it to me. They actually gave us two, a silver one for Tim and a gold one for me, as I like it. <laughs> but um, the Northeast houses have some really terrific energy uh, next year with lots of opportunity for advancement. And the North houses are also going to be transformational houses. Things are going to happen. If you have felt like you've been stuck with your feet in cement, uh, 2022 is going to really get get things moving. The, the great water, yang water energy that's coming into 2022 is going to help create this transformation. So uh, let's just, I'm going to go over it really quick. Uh, the Southeast, if you have it, this is your bedroom or your front door, you have uh, romance luck coming to you. This this month and next year, if your house faces south or your bedroom's in the south, you are going to have recognition coupling with opportunity. I like that very much. The southwest sector, uh, if you are have a house that faces southwest or a bedroom in the southwest, uh, relationships could be tested and women could fall ill. So watch your stress, watch your health, take good care of yourself because I love you and I want you to be okay. In the East, we've got the stress star, the, the three star is moving into the East, but this is, three star is also growth, but stress and frustration can boil over uh, this month and in, and in 2022. So we really want to Really want to watch those those family relationships and the relationship with the oldest son and um, manage uh, things like legal issues, which makes me think of divorce and that kind of thing. So uh, keep on some nice lights and colors uh, and bright colors and even candles in the East Sector will help help with this. Uh, in the center sector, we it's called the calamity star, and it could bring difficulties this month that range from financial difficulties, relationship problems, and definitely health problems, especially ones of the head. I remember one time a client had uh, this combination. I could see in a couple of months she was going to have the five-star heading to uh, the Northwest. And I said, you have to be careful about things with the head like cancer or uh, stroke. Anything that happens with the head, it turns out she ended up having a brain tumor. Right when it, right when the monthly energy came in, she's doing great and wonderful. So I think uh, this is a this is terrific. You're going to want to keep that. Remember that center sector. Keep it really calm. Keep it really uh, cool there. Uh, let's see where are we? Uh, west sector. Uh, again, we've got it's a good energy this year with the eight com, uh, eight star there, but the seven star moves in. This is remember is what I was talked about the the COVID star. So I worry about infection potential, especially for kids. Or this also can be school related bullying, arguments around children, disagreements uh, around children. Uh, if you have a west facing house or a west bedroom, you want to be very careful with your safety with accidents. You might have more tooth and mouth problems this year. You could also have things like identity theft. Uh, so watch that really carefully. Add blue colors in the west. West corner. In the Northeast, like I was saying, great money opportunity and recognition is coming uh, this year and this month. So there's great news about uh, business advancement. So good stuff and very helpful. It's especially true for oxes and tigers because they are in the Northeast, considered of the Northeast. In the, the North sector, the, the rat that we talked about earlier, there is a uh, victory luck coming uh, this month. So you might see something if you felt stuck, little rat, you're going to get unstuck. Something's going to start moving and come un, unbound. And I, I really like that. But you want to be careful with um, uh, problems with domineering women. <clears throat> we also want to make sure that uh, that uh, you be, you're careful about uh, stomach illness or illness with the, like an ear infection or any kind of kidney or bladder issues that we want to be careful about that. In the Northwest, this is the domain of the pig and the dog. Uh, great fortune energy visits, but we just want to watch for stress or injury this month uh, because this is where the seven and six starter comes together in 2022. It's going to be so much better. 
Um, if this is your house uh, facing direction or your bedroom direction, uh, you're going to want to be very careful about potential for bleeding and blood loss and potential for miscarriage. Add a conch shell and a quang kung uh, to enhance this. You can also add blue linens or some blue colors to, to manage that. So let's see, if we talked, we talked about the dragon and the snake, you've got romance and creative luck on the rise. Horse, you've got uh, recognition energy that's going to couple with opportunity. Uh, you're going to come to everyone's attention. Uh, in the monkey and the sheep, I'm afraid you're going to be a little bit stressed this year coming up. Uh, your relationships might be tested and you need to watch your health very closely because I worry that you could have stress-related issues, but uh, you could also have issues with the stomach. Um, and we want to be uh, really, you want be really cautious uh, with your health this year. Take Keep a close eye on it. Rabbits, stress, stress is coming. And rabbits, you're going to want to have, uh, make sure that you wear red colors, bright colors, and, and manage that stress. Uh, watch for legal things. Uh, you might just get more traffic tickets, something like that, parking tickets. Uh, rooster, uh, we want to be uh, extra careful about injury, accident, infection, even things like identity uh, fraud is a concern. And the ox and tiger, it's, the, it's all good things coming to you with money and opportunity and recognition this month and in uh, 2022. So it's really nice to, to let you know about that. All right, so there you go. We've got uh, an exciting, exciting month coming up, and I hope that you just remain focused on it. Remember the watchword for everyone, no matter what your zodiac sign is, is that center energy, that five star. No red colors, no candles, no flames, no loud noises. Keep it quiet, keep it still, keep it easy. Take care of yourself. Look after your health, look after your loved ones, and you will get through the month just great. All right, everybody. I think we got uh, a whole month and year uh, outlook for what's coming both in November and in 2022. And I've got my my 2022 forecast going on right now, working my fingers to the bone to get it all um, written up and ready to go. And I'm excited about the year of the tiger. I can see some really nice growth, but we need to talk about what element is so important next year, even though it's going to be a yang water year and lots of growth. I think we've got some, some great energy that's going to transform. We're, we're going to see a clearing away of so much of the last two years. And I'm excited for that. So keep that, you know, pin that up in your, in your mind and in your hopes and thoughts. All right, then have a great week. Thanks for hanging around with me. And thanks for filling out that my, the burning question uh, survey that I had, because I, it really uh, was enlightening to, to read your questions. I will talk to you next week then on five minute feng shui. Have a great week. You know, the year of the tiger is coming and I can't wait to talk with you about what all is in store. We have a clean sweep, a transformational year of water energy with the water tiger in 2022. That means big change is coming. No longer will we have the stricture and constriction of the metal years that we've just come out of with COVID and the pandemic. We have got a clean sweep of energy coming in next year. And I can't wait to tell you all about it in my 2022 Year of the Tiger Feng Shui Forecast and Success Pack. Stay tuned right here for a release date that's coming soon.